right. So my name is Fatima Salahuddin, and this is Letting Go of Power. So after attending several emotionally draining board meetings in January that led up to the closing of my school and going on strike a month later, I was completely and utterly exhausted and in many ways broken. My community, as you can see from this image, was broken. And after experiencing what felt to be so oppressive and traumatic, to be honest, I just didn't want to teach anymore. Admitting this in public feels like the parent who feels guilty for saying, I just don't want to be a parent anymore. So the idea of my students becoming the teacher was in many ways a form of self-care, but also care for my students, for they were becoming these radicalized leaders and freedom fighters as a result of the strike and the school closure. So I wanted them to continue to build agency. So let me ask you guys a question. Imagine if your students took over your entire classroom as the teachers for two whole weeks. What does that look like? <laughs> Complete chaos, right? <laughs> because we all have students like my goofy one here. Our uh, Bubba is his name, so just look at that face. We all have a Bubba, right? He's my fifth period class clown, and as soon as I announced it, he gets up like, I'm ready to teach right now, let's go. And the class was like, Ms. Salahuddin, you are tripping. This is not gonna work. But I knew in some ways that this could work. So I gave all my power away to the students, and I modeled for them all these components that you see on this agenda here. So I used this as a model lesson and I titled it Three Benefits of Being the Teacher. And I gave that to them as to use as a template or outline to basically create their own lesson on a topic related to ethnic studies. And these were some really dope deep topics. I wish I had time to list them all. Um, one topic, one student wanted to talk about the difference between Guatemalan and Mexican culture. So I'm like, wow, we're thinking about theories of race and ethnicity. Or like my student Terry, who identifies as Cambodian, and she taught us a lesson on her culture, Cambodian dance, and she had my entire class of black and brown students saying words like uncle and auntie, hello and goodbye in Cambodian. She was sharing her linguistic capital. Or like my students Jorge, Bernard, and uh, Christian, they did a lesson on ice because all of my students were required to come up with a learning target, like the one that they came up with right here. So from doing this inquiry, there were three core learnings that I want to share with you. So the first is building empathy. At the end, as part of a reflection, I did a think, feel, care thinking routine. And I used word bubbles to kind of highlight the word frequencies when I asked them to step inside of a teacher. What do they think, feel, and care about? I also asked them in a reflection, how has being the teacher helped you build empathy? And some students said, it taught me to care and to stay paying attention. Or another student, I know how teachers feel when we rude. <laughs> Our one student that just left the class crying, just like, forget this, I'm done. This is so frustrating. <laughs> Secondly, uh, by letting go of power, it empowers our students. So I want to focus on Marhab here, who is small, but she took over my class like a professional. She not only taught the class, but she really managed the classroom in a really effective way. So at one point, she even walks over to my most disruptive table, Muhammad and Eddie, and she warmly demands, I need you two to move. I was like, oh, she's doing my job for me. <laughs> and Muhammad looks at me like, can she do this? And I said, you know what, Muhammad? I'm with the teacher on this one. I need you to listen to the teacher right now. And they moved. <laughs> and then lastly, and most importantly, the one that I really hold near and dear to my theoretical heart is that knowledge can be accessed through many sources, especially from the students themselves and that this offers the opportunity, but most importantly, the responsibility of taking part in a system of knowledge sharing. So which I believe in many ways really reflects Yaso's community cultural wealth framework that we're all very familiar with and we all try to make space for our students for. So once again, like Terry, who shared her linguistic capital, our Marhab, who has a lot of social capital and she really used that. So ultimately this led me to these closing questions. And the first one, what would our education system look like if we allowed our students to be the teachers? And once again, I let go of all the power in my classroom and I am a control freak. So I wanna ask you guys all today, what are you gonna let go of? Thank you. <laughs>